My name is Karen Adams. I'm an archaeobotanist, also known as paleoethnobotanist, and I analyze and interpret the plant remains that come out of archaeological sites, uh, both the reproductive parts and the wood charcoal. It tells a story about human plant interactions in the past. You can learn different things from the archaeological plant record. For example, if a group was intensively farming and relying very heavily on corn, beans, and squash, or whether they had a nice mixed diet, uh, some farming um, products and many wild foods. We can learn things about wood use, such as the common woods people were bringing in for their fires to cook their food and keep warm. We can track whether they were using those resources up over time. The plant remains in archaeological sites are primarily acquired through a process called flotation. And so we take flotation samples, basically dirt samples, and they are put in water and the plant parts in the samples float on the surface of the water and they are skimmed off and saved. And that's what we look at under the microscope. The samples with the best information are are the result of accidental burning in prehistory. So somebody accidentally burnt lunch, and we will get evidence of that, what I call the black burn bits of prehistory. Now this is very counterintuitive, because when you think of burning, burning destroys things. But burning does not completely consume these plant parts, and once they turn into elemental carbon through the burning process, they are no longer of interest to degrading organisms like uh, fungi and insects, so they become preserved. Archaeobotanists have to rely on archaeologists to sample the kinds of places in archaeological sites that have the best chance of preserving the archaeological plant record. This includes places like haars, roasting pits, because little plant bits get burned. They fall out of the, the, the pot that they're cooking in. So those are great places to find the archaeological plant record. The other great place is middens, trash. We like garbage. Ancient garbage it is, but it's where people threw all the mistakes, the leftovers. The trash provides a long-term perspective of people doing different activities over time. The horror is a short-term perspective of a few meals prepared. You can compare and contrast the two and actually learn how diets or subsistence practices are changing over time. I think over time what I've learned about the Pueblo culture in the past is that people were very smart, very astute observers of their environment and they had a broad-based diet of both plants they grew in their fields and wild plants they utilized. I think um, the very biodiversity of the diets they had had to have been healthy. They brought nutrition and vitamins and minerals to the table. They also brought enough calories for these people to have children and be able to stay on the landscape. So I think they were doing everything right.